I said we've got uh, a significant gouge and it's nothing that you could steam out and then the binding over here has also been banged up pretty bad and we also have some damage down here uh, this is mainly finish right here and so the proper fix with it would be we will take the nut out pop the first fret and then cut all the way down to the neck and then take this section of the uh, fingerboard out and then just glue in a new piece of rosewood one that would match and then recut the fret slot uh, probably replace this piece of binding and and then you've got a solid repair and it's gonna match up and look like it it never even happened but with this one like i said you know what they want is to get the guitar back going as soon as possible so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use some epoxy with a uh, sawdust powder from uh, rosewood and fill this in and then i'm gonna take some aniline dyes and and try to mimic uh, the grain pattern and then we're going to smooth this out, file this down, and then use some black epoxy to fill in any voids that come about. And then we'll just touch this finish up back here in the standard way. Uh, so that's how we're gonna go about it. So here we go. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna make sure all of this is kind of flush and level. So I'm gonna lightly I had already glued the binding back on and so I'm just going to get all of this down and even and then that will kind of give me an idea of what all I'm going to have to do. And And I'll go back in with some fine sandpaper and when we reshoot the finish back here and build it up, it will work out well. All right, so that's looking pretty good this way. It's flush and we don't have as much to fill in the binding section. So now we're going to get set up to do the epoxy here. All right, so I've got my epoxy and I've got my uh, powder. Got me a little piece of paper to mix on, tongue depressor. So we're going to mix up just a little bit. I always like to, a little bit more than I think I'm going to need. That way I got to go back in. I can and just like with any other epoxy we're going to squeeze out normal amounts and then we're going to mix those together and then we're going to take some of the powder And we'll mix that all together. All right, now we're gonna quickly move back over. All right, so now we're just gonna take the epoxy and we're gonna put it over here and we're going to just let it, we're going to pile it up pretty thick. And then that way it can work its way down into the cavity. And then we will 
let that cure. Got a little bit right there. All right, so we'll be back in about 20 minutes. Some other camera died. I'm not real sure where. I'll have to check when I edit it. But what we did was, uh, if you saw it, I don't know. So I'm going to cover it real quick. We sanded that down, and uh, now we're fixing to recondition the fretboard with a little uh, fretboard oil. And it should, uh, and I'll, I'll wipe the whole fretboard down with this after I clean it, but it pretty much makes that uh, disappear. Um, again, I would rather have cut this off here and replaced this whole piece of wood, but it just wasn't feasible for their uh, price point. So now we got to deal with this side right here. on the side so I can kind of see what I'm doing all right so this is uh, mahogany and it looks like it's got some tobacco brown but we got a big weird bump going on there so I'm gonna turn this into a scraper real quick and Level this out. So we got a pretty substantial gap we got to fill up here that's all finished. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. That looks really odd right there. Like, that's yeah, where it's shattered. Yeah, so we'll flick all that out of there. I don't want anything on here that's not well attached. I'll, build it back up so I'm gonna drop fill this with some super glue and then if I need to go in and airbrush some color over the top of it and then put some lacquer I think this is urethane then we'll do that but it still looks like the colors there underneath it just needs to have some build up so we'll take some uh, number 20 super blue uh, Put a little accelerator in here just so it kind of doesn't want to run as bad. And then we'll get that. And I'm going to have to let that dry. 
and then we'll just keep building layers up until it had a bubble in it we'll keep building that up until we can sand and shape it and then we'll take it over and the buffer and wet sand and buff it out and see where we're at and if we got to add color so I'm going to keep building this up and we'll come back when we're ready to reshape it and see where we're at. All right, where we're at at this point is the first round of filler with the, the super glue. It's dried. I sanded it. I've got a couple more spots that I had to fill right in here. We're going to let that dry. And then we'll go back in and we'll fade this color in and then we'll put some clear over the top of it and it'll probably uh, blend in pretty nice so we're gonna let that dry and when it gets dry we'll come back and keep moving right, forward so everything is smooth uh, I sanded all the scratches out uh, all the way up to like 15,000 I think with these pads I got from Stuart McDonald I normally use them for fret work but they they work really good they uh, is what they look like they're just uh, all kinds of different grits and uh, I just progress through them until it's almost back to the same gloss that it had but now we got to put some color on that uh, I looked in my finishing book and it's pretty much a straight up tobacco brown color and so I've got some uh, tobacco brown color tone stain and I got some alcohol over here and we're gonna just throw some in there because that's how I do it I just go with it and then I'm gonna mix it all up and stir it up slosh it around and that's very dark on the tongue depressor however this has a finish on it, or it's got sealer. So I'm gonna dip this rag in here, and I'm just gonna kinda dab some on there and let it dry and just keep building it up until it's close the only way you would ever get uh, a perfect match is if uh, you refinish the entire neck Now I notice there's a real dark spot right there and what that tells me is I sanded through the sealer and got to bare wood and so we're gonna have to stop and rectify that so we're not back to square one but we are gonna have to go a step or two back because I'm gonna have to put some sealer on that and there's a couple ways you can do it uh, Basically, all I'm going to do is just scrape that spot and get most of that color off of there. And you could use a little bit of lacquer right there and let that dry. You could use a little bit of shellac right there and let that dry. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, a little bit of lacquer. And so I need to kind of block that. Well, what I'll just spray a little bit of lacquer in a cup and use a brush. That will work. And then we'll let that dry. And that'll create our barrier between uh, the wood. That way it should stain evenly.
and it shouldn't take a whole lot. So, like I said, I just sprayed a little bit in this cup, and it changed the color, which is good because that's the kind of the color I'm going for right there. Once I get, uh, so we're gonna. Lay that on there, cover that area, cause that looks pretty good. And I'm also putting it up here on the binding, so when I wet sand, after I put a few coats of clear on there, everything kind of comes back to a nice gloss. So, so we're gonna let that dry and then uh, We'll come back to it. I got excited about what I was doing and I forgot to turn the camera on. So at this point, I am at the consensus that unless I redo the entire neck, it's not going to get any better than that. And like I said, they're needing it back as soon as possible. I gave them the two options that could be done and they chose one. So this needs to dry, uh, probably get another coat and then it will be buffed, but that's going to be several days from now. So I will try to do a follow up video on that, uh, but it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great. Uh, this one spot right here. It just, uh, sorry about that. It just, even after putting the sealer on there, it, it was still soaking it up. So, like I said, it's it's one of those things, unless you just take the neck down, usually you'll come, you know, tape all this off and then re-sand this all the way down to the heel and refinish the entire neck for it to be seamless. Um, there are people out there that could probably do it, but we're gonna let it dry, we'll look at it again, and then we'll go from there. Hey, this is Craig, we're at Goods and Guitars here, and we're finishing up with the Ibanez on the fretboard damage. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show y'all where we're at. I talked to the client today, told him uh, where we were at, sent him some pictures. Uh, he told me that he needed it back for church on Sunday, so we're gonna go ahead and send it out. They were happy, so I guess that means I'm happy. But uh, I think we could have done a better job with more time, but you know you got to do what the client wants so uh i'll show you where we're at. all right so this is the guitar that came in uh you know if you remember at the front of the video we had like a huge gouge in the wood right there and it's it's barely noticeable uh the guitar plays fine i played it uh the thing i'm not the happiest with is the 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 finish patch uh you know it's got some dark spots in it it wasn't a perfect match but like i said when we were working on it you know to get it to where it's unnoticeable i would have had to redo the entire neck so basically where we're at at this point is uh we're gonna send it out and you know this thing's got enough battle scars on it already that it probably will blend in fine and no one will ever notice but as long as the customer's happy that's gonna be that so like i said i appreciate y'all watching uh if you like the content go ahead and hit like and subscribe smash the bell if you want to see more y'all have a great day bye bye